Good morning, grade seven class. Welcome back to IS. Um, this is Mr. Chris, if you can tell. Um, we are into lesson two about colonization and how it began around the world. Just an overview, preparing you to apply some background knowledge, but do a lot of investigation in your project, which is coming. So grade nine, or not grade nine, grade seven, this is um, your bell ringer for today. So please take some time to answer these questions in your notes. Yes, you will have to submit these to manage back at the end. So jot these down, answer them, hit pause right now so that you can take time to answer them. Hit pause. Hit pause. Okay. So um, the first question we have for you, bell ringer, is what is the easiest, what is easiest to transport goods with, a camel or a boat? Why do I ask this? Well, it's it's easier to transport a whole bunch of stuff on boats because the boats don't need water to keep going. Okay, they don't need um, food. They hold a lot more than a, a two humped camel, right? A two humped camel maybe holds what three hundred pounds worth of stuff as it go. A boat can can load up thousands and take it across the ocean in no time. And so why I ask this is. We are seeing through the work of colonization how the world is shrinking. And so for a long time, there's this thing called the Silk Road. We learned about this in grade six. The Silk Road went through a desert. It went through mountains. It went through Indonesia. It went through all over these places, hitting different spots all along the way, connecting the east to the west. Goods would flow. Lots of middlemen, kind of like the Gojeks in Jakarta. The costs went up. So if you could, you would go find a way to get your boat to the place where the camels are coming from, fill it up with a whole bunch of stuff, cut out all the middlemen, and just take that stuff back home and sell it and make a lot of money. Remember, colonization is all about the money. So what is the VOC? So this is just a trend. That last question was about transitioning to how the thinking was, we're not going to use the Silk Road. We're going to use boats, and we're going to bring everything back for cheaper. What is the VOC? The VOC was the Dutch East India Company that came to Indonesia. Okay, they were um, sometimes oppressive. They established a port. They traded. They um, grew and they colonized Indonesia. Okay, some people don't know that it was a, the Dutch East India Company. I don't know why not. Okay, what is the world pie of wealth? Um, remember, this was the thinking uh, at the time that there's only so much wealth in this world. There's only so much out there, and um, the more you have of it, the better. And you don't want to be losing any, but you want to get as much as you can before you die for who? Your country, right? So this was the fuel, right? The gas that drove colonization. This is the gas that drove imperialism, okay? It is the idea that if the kings and countries would want to increase their wealth, what would they have to do? They'd have to go take it from somewhere else. So it drove them to to grab and grab and grab wherever they could. Um, what is the difference between colonization and imperialism? The nice thing is I have a slide right below this, right here. Okay, colonization is a process by which a central system of power dominates and surrounds land and its components. Imperialism is a policy of extending a country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. So, um, right, we talked about how um, colonization, right, it's this mechanism for establishing a presence, resources, gathering, influence, all these things in an area, and being a central system of power over another surrounding land. And so imperialism is the gas that drives colonization, and we will find that because imperialism countries want to grow stronger, okay, that's the gas that goes in the car of colonization. A means to which meeting the idealism of colonization is through the process of, or imperialism is the process of colonizing. Or um, we see it a little bit differently now with China and the United States and um, other countries where they still are kind of colonization, colonizing, but it's, it's mostly just the gas being thrown out there. Imperialism, there's a much stronger world. Um, network of governance and laws and makes it harder but like we see china doing this sort of thing in 
in Africa right now where they are extending resources to build and develop lands. When they can't pay them back, then they exploit the land. They um, establish themselves as a power and influence them in diplomacy. And if they don't, they're threatened with military force or being cut off from different things that they've already promised. One of the things they do is they these countries are asked to vote right in a certain way for China during the United Nations meetings. Sometimes it's about um, right uh, different things like environmental issues or um, yeah Taiwan is part of China or its own country. So they do it now. They did it back then. We're looking at it today as back then. Uh, one thing I want you to know is have your term sheet out right now so you can pause the video. Go get it. Once you have it, it's good just to add to your term sheet things maybe that come up that you don't know. Put it in there because this is going to help you a lot farther down the line in this unit. Um, the other thing is if you don't know one of the words that I'm saying and you already wrote it down, be like instead of stopping and, and going and searching it up or trying to not understand what I'm talking about, you can just pause the video, look up your term sheet. Oh, that means this. Thank you, term sheet. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Boom. We get out of here scotch-free. Okay. Game plan, Age of Exploration, India Colonization. We'll see if we get to India today. Um, I hope so, but we only have 15 minutes on a video. So, uh, the Age of Exploration. Um, the Age of Exploration started in the 1400s, okay? A lot of you guys have probably heard of Columbus, who discovered the Americas, right? There's this time in this thinking that the world was flat, right? We get this. They um, thought that the sun went around the earth, all these things. And um, some claim that the Bible taught it, but some claim that the Bible also teaches it the other way. But anyways, it doesn't really matter who taught it before. But this idea that the earth is round, OK, was starting to gain tractions. People started to think, oh, this might be a thing. And so the, the Silk Road has been going on for a while. The Roman Empire has fallen. Right. There's a lot of disunity. There's not much of a strong world leader and so the earth is round came about blew people's mind what somebody was hung and killed for it believe that or not i i believe it because it's true um but columbus columbus christopher columbus great name um he convinced his king or queen at the time to to send him on a voyage across really convinced that there's something over there if the world is round we can get to india we can trade with them. We can put a whole bunch of their spices and their wonderful things on our boats. And instead of taking it by camels the long way and paying a whole bunch of money for it, we'll get it. It'll be for the king. We'll claim the land. It'll be ours. Okay. There's something over there. Discovering the new world. The age of exploration. This is where people started exploring the world. And Christopher Columbus was the first one to discover the Americas. I say discovers because how do you discover a place that already has millions of people on it? Right? Um, and some people say, oh, those people came 40,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, but I saw there's, you can find it where they do the population growth of people. And if there were people on, in North America for 40,000 years, there'd be so many people, there wouldn't be enough room for them. Okay. Even 10,000 years ago. So the people we have to assume went to, arrived in North America less than 4,000 years ago. Okay, somewhere in there, maybe 4,000, 3,000 years ago. Uh, but didn't discover America. The, the Native Americans did. Christopher Columbus wasn't even the first one there. The Vikings beat him to it, to the wonderful land of Canada. Okay, so for centuries, um, goods have been flowing them along the Silk Road. Europe wanted their boats to get to India, so they got to find another way there. We got to start flying. Portugal started down the coast of Africa. Portugal is always in competition with Spain. It's a little country there. Luis is from there. Okay, they go down. They start hopping along the coast of Africa. If I have my map, you can see it. And then as they're going, right, they, they go around Africa to get to India. It took more than four months to get there. Storms supplies all these things became from spanish people hire christopher columbus and he's like i'm going across the atlantic to get there because i'm not dumb i don't want to go all the way around africa and die okay so then he starts going across over time okay he goes across and he finds basically central the the islands around central america over time the pope granted the rights to the new world to both spain and portugal remember pope had more power than the king usually back then in his 
quite amazing. But the Spanish and the Portuguese, once Columbus went there, they everyone starts heading west. We gotta find out what's over there because we need to claim more of this world pie for our king. So Vasco de Baldos sealed Brazil as Portugal's and the rest from Florida down and around the Spanish and around down through um, Peru, all those places that became part of the Spanish Empire. Okay, Portuguese on one side. I forget which long two line it was. I'll have to go back to my history notes from college. And then the other half was the Spanish. And that was decided by the Pope. Yeah, pastor telling you what you can do. Meanwhile, the French and the British, who don't want to be outdone by this, the Spanish and the Portuguese walking around in their big baggy golfing clothes. Okay, they start heading that way too. And they, the British are actually the closest. And they are going... And they try, the British and the French, they're going, and they're trying to get around Canada. They think, we can get around this place, okay? They find Canada, they go up the north, uh, not the North Saskatchewan, I love going the St. Lawrence River. Um, they discover most of the United States and what is now Canada, and attempt to find the Northwest Passage and a, to trade with India. So they try to go around the top part of the north american continent um but basically it's all arctic we don't know how long it's been frozen but it's definitely been frozen for as long as they were trying they couldn't find it they would try in the summers get stuck in the winter some people would even stay over the winter with the inuit people in canada so they are trying to go north they establish settlements things like that like the founding of jamestown new york all those places we'll get into those later they didn't even know the important thing is the British and French are trying to find this Northwest Passage, and they don't even know it exists. They're going, and they're living on a prayer. So, to end this um, lesson, I have on Manage Back a document that has three, there's three pages. You need to read the three pages. They're from the textbook. If you are Marcus or anyone else who has a sibling in grade six, your sibling has the textbook, and you can do the reading from there. There are five major players in the exploration, the age of exploration. And there are five paragraphs written about those five countries. Take time, read those in a table, name the five countries, the places in the world that they controlled, maybe who they were, how they did it. And then answer for me the question, um, why did the small countries at the time, like the Dutch, English, and the Portuguese, have such a large role in the land grab at the time? How could such small countries control so much? Okay, what was it that did it? From your reading, answer these questions. Remember, that question needs to be answered in three or more sentences. When you're finished, answer and submit your findings to the Dropbox in Manage Back, and you are good for this lesson. It shouldn't take you very long. Peace be with you. If you have any questions you'd like for me to answer, whether personal or funny or about IS, please hit me up with an email or something like that, and I can get those into you for the next few videos.